Uh, but first up this hour, we are talking certified organic. And, um, you know, at any farmer's market on any given day in any number of cities and towns throughout the country, if you ask a farmer, and I've done this on many occasions, if their produce is pesticide free, you are likely to get one of a few responses. Uh, one is, uh, no, we spray. The uh, Another one might be, uh, yes, it is pesticide free. And then they usually follow with that, that up with, but it's not certified organic. Uh, sometimes they feel the need to let you know that they're not saying that it's organic. They're just saying that they don't use pesticides because, and then if you, you know, follow up with that question, you are likely to find out that it is not an easy nor inexpensive process to get that organic certification. Many farmers have, and I think hats off to them. That is fantastic that they do. Uh, many others, you know, either they just don't have the volume or they uh, there are some other uh, circumstances that are involved that just make it very difficult or uh, too cost prohibitive for them to have that organic certification. And that doesn't mean that their produce is inferior. It just doesn't meet certain guidelines laid out by the federal go government regarding organics. So with that in mind, uh, some farmers in New York got together and said, uh, what if we had a, a different type of certification that still let people know that our produce is uh, grown following you know, uh, certain standards, it is uh, pesticide-free, and those sorts of things. And uh, it really took off up in uh, the Northeast uh, called Certified Naturally Grown. It has spread throughout the United States, here in California as well. And uh, I, for one, want to know more about it. So I thought uh, it would be a good idea to bring on Alice Varen. Uh, she's with Certified Naturally Grown. You can find more information at naturallygrown.org. And Alice is on our guest live line right now. Hey, Alice, nice to have you with us. Hey, thanks for having me, Randall. It's great to be here. So uh, if you were listening to that open, did I get it about right? I love it. It's so fun to hear people tell our story and get it. On the nose. Oh, yes, good. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you did, except, except, you know. Uh, so it, for most people, it's not that they don't want to become uh, certified mm -hmm. organic. It's just that there are these barriers in place. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of our, our members uh, appreciate that the National Organic Program exists and want to see it succeed. Um, but when they looked into the nitty gritty of what would be required to go through that certification process, they ended up deciding that it just wasn't a good fit for their particular operation. What are some of the biggest hurdles, Alice, that you hear from the farmers that have decided to go certified naturally grown as opposed to certified organic? What were some mm -hmm. of the biggest hurdles that they mm -hmm. just, you know, found were too big to surmount? Well, the, really the ones that you, you mentioned. Uh, for some farmers, it's the paperwork that's required. Um, and that's ongoing, right? That's, uh, you, you have to yeah. continue with the paperwork. It's the hardest the first year that you apply. That's when you have to write your organic system plan and document all your crops. Um, there's definitely an upfront investment in going through the organic certification process. And for a lot of farms, it's worth it. Um, but And then in the subsequent years, I, I understand that it's less. Um, but a lot of our members are just getting off the ground. They're in their first five years of farming, and it's just not something they're prepared to take on. And we feel like we're doing something very uh, we're offering something valuable by giving them a way to convey their practices and their values to customers at the farmer's market, which is where most of our members sell. I was going to ask that. Uh, is this something that large commercial growers use, or is it typically uh, the ones that set up shop at a local market? And Yeah, it's a program that's specifically tailored for direct market farmers who are producing food for their local communities and their typically selling through maybe a, a CSA, definitely through many farmers markets um, or a farm stand on site and through some local health food stores as well. Now, we have heard on many occasion that the word natural does not have any uh, teeth to it when it comes to labeling. So I'm wondering, uh, do people ever question that? Do they say, oh, well, I've heard natural doesn't mean anything do you then have yeah. to let them know that yours is something different? 
it is a challenge for us um, because there are some less scrupulous companies that have um, sought to play on people's desire to have natural food, yeah. and they know that that's a selling term um, that that isn't regulated. Um, it's a word in the English language, so I hope it will retain its meaning. Um, <laughs> meaning, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, and it's definitely not the kind of thing that we're playing into. We're very transparent about the standards, what it means for a farm to be called certified naturally grown. It comes with a set of uh, growing practices as well as program requirements. They've all been inspected. Um, so we, you know, we hope to overcome that skepticism. And generally speaking, when people find out about our purpose and what we mean, they're very excited to learn. We're speaking with Alice Varen. She's with Certified Naturally Grown. More information at naturallygrown.org. Uh, when we come back, we will speak with Alice about exactly what it takes to get this level of certification. Uh, also, uh, where growers are, where they're picking up more and more growers along these lines. Uh, Alice, as you know, our show is broadcast on California's uh, Central Coast, which in some areas is known as the nation's uh, salad bowl. Also, uh, just over the hills, we have uh, California's Central Valley. And uh, boy, I just saw a picture from NASA uh, showing that fire burning in Yosemite, the Rim Fire, and uh, you really could get a, the concept of how huge and immense and agriculturally filled that Central Valley is. It's just uh, just unreal. Uh, so, uh, Alice, we'll address some of those things coming back in just a moment. You are listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio's Market Fresh Hour. I'm your host, Randall White, and we are back in just a moment. Luna Red Restaurant in downtown San Luis Obispo is the perfect spot for a weekend brunch offered every Saturday and Sunday from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Enjoy farm-to-table breakfast plates such as the Rip of Benedict's, Mission Steak and Eggs, and Quinoa Waffles topped with fresh market berries. Or opt for a lunch plate such as the grilled Asian-style fish taco salad or the roast chicken bacon avocado sandwich. Lounge on the sunny patio with views of the historical Mission Plaza while savoring our bottomless mimosas offered from 9.30 a.m. to noon. Hang out on Sunday afternoons from 3 to 5 p.m. and catch our live music on the patio during $5 happy hour. Luna Red also accommodates large parties, so call us today to make a reservation. Follow us on Facebook for daily specials and visit our website, lunaredslo.com, to view current seasonal menus, our live music schedule, or check out our happy hour offerings. Luna Red is located at 1023 Choro Street at the corner of Monterey. Come to be fulfilled. Hey, Central Coast locals, it is time to save 15% on your tickets to this year's Sunset Savor the Central Coast main event, Saturday and Sunday, September 28th and 29th. It's easy. Just visit SaverCentralCoast.com, enter the promo code LOCAL during checkout, and voila, your savings are complete. This year's theme is Time to Play, so why not play at a discount while learning tips from top celebrity chefs, tasting some of the area's best local wines, as well as farm-to-plate culinary creations. Runners, you too can save an additional $10 on the inaugural Saver Run, a 5 and 10K walk run through downtown San Luis Obispo. Not only do you save money, but a portion of your entry fee also helps local cancer survivors with fitness programs. So do it now, before time runs out. You only have until the end of the month to cash in on these savings. Visit SaverCentralCoast.com. Use the promo code LOCAL. See you at the main event.
And welcome back to the program, everyone. 19 minutes past the hour now. Great to have you with us here on the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network, specifically our Market Fresh Hour. I am your host, Randall White. We're talking all things uh, food, wine, travel, uh, uh, specifically, though, about farm fresh products. And uh, I know that a lot of you really... Uh, look for and enjoy organic produce when you're at your local farmer's market and may uh, ask the vendors uh, whether something is organic or in some cases pesticide-free. Well, there is a new certification that is growing strength here in the United States, and it's called Certified Naturally Grown. Uh, If you're looking for more information on this, check out naturallygrown.org. We are joined by Alice Varen from Certified Naturally Grown, uh, who's giving us a really good sense of uh, what this is all about. And uh, Alice, thank you for holding on uh, through the commercial break there. Sure thing. Happy to be here. So uh, what is the big difference between Certified Naturally Grown and Certified Organic? Sure. Good question. Uh, The main difference, there's two really. One is that we are specifically a program for direct market farmers who are selling locally, um, but it's similar in that our standards are based on the National Organic Program standards. So just like organic farmers, certified naturally grown farmers don't use any synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides, and no GMO seeds in their crops. Um, The other difference is a significant one, which is that the inspection process is carried out typically by other farmers in the area. So it's a peer review certification program. Mm -hmm. So that gives it the added benefit of building connections among farmers, strengthening the farming community, because it creates opportunities for farmers to get together and learn from each other and share techniques and knowledge, which is really the best way Um, one of the best ways to encourage a strong movement for sustainable agriculture is to have knowledge exchange. And I would imagine by having your, you know, your your fellow farmers, uh, you can band Mm -hmm. together, but they're also in some way competition. (laughs) And so by having the competition check you out and make sure that you're following it, they're, (laughs) they're going to make sure you're doing it right, I would imagine. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's one way to look at it. Another more perhaps optimistic way is that the farmers conducting the inspections themselves want it to be a meaningful program that Mm. has some cachet with their customers. So they don't want to let people in if they're going to be cutting corners and cheating because it hurts everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, because if it loses, if at all, it starts to get tarnished and show that it doesn't have any teeth, then it just becomes worthless. It's worthless certification. Right. Yeah, why bother? Right. Yeah. So uh so there's no federal paperwork with this because uh you're not a federal organization. Right, we're an independent nonprofit uh that's not affiliated with any government agency. We're funded primarily through the farmers who participate, so we're very grassroots. Okay. And so um uh, some people might say, well is this for some is this for a farmer that's almost organic? Mm, right. I know that's often the perception, but um, it's not the case. It's, you know, for, for farmers who are fully committed to organic practices um, as strictly defined. And, um, you know, many of our our farmers are proud that they, they don't even use the inputs that are allowed in the National Organic Program. But we're neither trying to be almost organic, nor are we necessarily setting out standards that are beyond organic. Um, we're a parallel system that we see as an important complement to the National Organic Program that is intentionally inclusive of the small-scale farmers who are going to be perhaps future certified organic farmers once they get bigger and want to access larger markets. Right, and we talked about that, about uh, that sometimes the organic certification can just be too pricey, too costly uh, for the smaller farmers that are doing the uh, direct-to-consumer at the farmers' markets. So how much does your program cost? Right. Um, our certification program for farmers is 110 per year. 110 is the minimum. We, uh, we know that there are many farmers in Certified Naturally Grown who can afford more than that and wish to support us. So we recommend 125 to 200 and let the farmers decide what they're comfortable with. And that added amount over the 110 goes towards investing in the organization and helping us grow. Um, yeah. And that's considerably less than any organic certification body that I've 
that I know of. Um, those typically are in the many hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars, which makes sense for larger operations, but doesn't really make as much sense for many of our members. Now, let's say we have some vendors who are listening right now and are thinking, oh, finally, some sort of certification process that we can do and display at the market so that uh, when people do come up like me <laughs> and ask right. about the pesticide use and such, uh, they can point to that. Uh, mm -hmm. If they're listening right now, from right now, after contacting you and such, how long is this process? Right. It um, it can go fairly quickly, as quickly as two or three weeks. Um, the first step would be to complete an application right on our website. You don't need to have anything mailed to you. Um, uh, our application asks about production methods. How do you handle pests and weeds and fertility? Um, and based on that, we may have some questions. But um, once those are addressed and everything seems to be in order, the next uh, step is to uh, arrange your on-farm inspection once your application is approved. And that's typically what takes the longest. Um, but if you are in an area with other certified naturally grown or organic farmers um, then who, who might be tapped to do an inspection, then it might go very quickly. So. Yeah. And we should mention that there are some within our listening area and some on the borders, too, that I didn't include, but uh, mm -hmm. as directly within our listening area, we have Gray's Lavender and Herb Farm in Atascadero, mm -hmm. Heart of Paso Produce out of Paso Robles, and Lamanto's Meyer Lemons in Hollister. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are three within the big bulk Central Coast uh, range uh, where you can hear this show. And uh, as I was uh, mentioning before the commercial break, three is a drop in the bucket compared to the number of farms we have out there. So I know that you're just getting started and just expanding. Is California a target market for you? You know, I, I think I think it is. Uh, we we haven't invested a lot in California. The farmers who who participate in in California really have come to us and found us. Um, but it's a big country, and we're a you know a, a modestly sized group. So to date, we've invested mostly in states um, on the on the eastern part of the country, and especially in the south is where there's a lot of interest. Um, oh, really? Uh -huh. And growth, absolutely. And I think it's one of the exciting things about the maturing of the organic movement, that we're seeing real interest in um, farming organically and on a small scale in state. Alice? Mississippi. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, we had a we had a little glitch there where we didn't oh. hear your voice for a moment. You were, you were mentioning Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. We've seen a lot of growth in Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, Alabama, and um, I think it's partly because this is where sustainable agriculture is getting a foothold, and there aren't as many organic farms there already. Oh, right. Um, mm -hmm. And there are some farmers markets that require uh, certification, either certified organic or certified naturally grown in Georgia. Um, and that has resulted in a lot of um, farmers participating and a lot of customer awareness. So. Well, for our listeners, if you're a farmer and you know uh, Lamento's Meyer Lemons, mm, I love Meyer Lemons, mm -hmm. uh, Heart of Basso Produce, or anyone with Gray's Lavender and Herb Farm, and you want to get on board with this, uh, contact them. Ask them how they feel about it and uh, learn a little inside information there. And mm -hmm. absolutely go to naturallygrown.org. Alice Varen, thank you mm -hmm. so much for, and I got your last name right, right? Varen did, like absolutely. heron, like the bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the little tip you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it sounds like heron. It's not spelled like heron. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Certified, yeah. naturally grown. I think it's the next big thing, uh, personally. Right. Uh, because, I'm glad to be here and share more about it. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, we'll have to have you back on as it uh, grows in popularity here on the West Coast. Let's do it. All right, stick around, everyone, because uh, just after the break, we are going to learn how you... Yes, you can choose which foods you eat or don't eat throughout the day and a little other, some other little practices to make sure you have the highest energy level possible. I'm your host, Randall White, and we are back in just a moment. Luna Red Restaurant in downtown San Luis Obispo is the perfect spot for a weekend brunch offered every Saturday and Sunday from 